off the show. We're on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app, streaming live on YouTube at the Team 980. And we welcome back for his last Friday visit for a while because he's going to start joining us on Wednesdays during football season. But it's Monday Night Football this week. So what's a day, Clinton Yates? What's a day? (laughs) Speaking of Monday Night Football, I was told one thing by a colleague that I thought you should know. We're oh, doing okay. television around the horn. And, you know, before the show, you sit around and you talk with your various cohorts on the air. I've, I've heard that's called before the horn. Before the horn. Correct. BTH. There you as go. It's known. So Kevin Blackstone, the professor, D.C. area native, good counsel, high graduate, yes. professor at Maryland. We all know his work. He says to me, Yates, I got something I want you to know. I was like, what's that, KB? He says, I am going for the first time in a decade, non-media. Wow. To see what? the Commanders play a football game. This man is going in gen pop to whatever that field is named now. Because he's Northwest sh- Stadium. Sure. Southwest Stadium. <laughs> Call it whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Call- look, that bank paid a lot of money. That credit <laughs> union paid a lot of money for that. Don't you I'm disparage. sure that you can get your daily. Or, I'm sure you can get your direct deposit a day early with them or whatever. My point is KB is going just as a regular fan to this game. And I understand that this sounds ridiculous. And if you are of the type that really values your experience at NFL games, please do not jump on me as being some type of a bougie person. But you have to understand. No, jump on me because that's that, absolutely what I am. Then you have to understand that once you get accustomed to a certain amount of access at games, it legitimately becomes less fun to just sit in the crowd and go because it's a completely different thing and you're there for entirely different reasons. Never mind if you've already been jaded as a fan. Craig, my jaw dropped. I was like, why are you going? Is somebody from Maryland in the game? Is there a good counsel or even WCAC grad playing on the field? He's like, nope, just plain interested. I was shocked, Gregory. Shocked. That is nuts. Yeah. I If you had told me an around the horn panelist was going, I would have picked like probably three or four people not from DC exactly. before I picked Blackstone to go to Northwest <laughs> Stadium as a fan on Monday night. <laughs> But I feel like that's happening for sure more and more. Like, I mean, well, I guess the game, the game Monday is in, uh, is in Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's probably worth pointing out before anybody goes searching for tickets. Yes. It's like, wait, I thought the game was, I want to go. No, it's, uh, it's not Monday, uh, or not Monday at home. But I do wonder how, like the Giants was such an interesting home opener because you always have the fans come down from right. New York and Philly. It's close. Um, it's just very easy to get to, but I do wonder this year, especially if they can at least ride around 500, yep. what the fan base looks like and how Jaden plays is going to be a huge thing. I don't have to tell you that the, the last time there were great home crowds on a regular basis, there was a, a quarterback that was the future of the franchise, number two pick, that, that was drawing a lot of that attention. Yeah, my friend but Bob. But I do think, yeah, I do think that with some of the upgrades they made to the stadium, the general effort, like, I do think fans care about that. Like, the fans that would spend money to go to a game, like, care, like, hey, this owner seems to be trying for us. And that alone, like, the attitude going in will help your fan experience versus, like, almost going out of spite. It is something that I definitely have a pin in it. I'll, I'll put it that way. Yes. Yeah, and, I, you know, I think about this a lot because, look, we're arguing with senators in Montana over what's going to happen at RFK, which is a whole other matter. And I think that Harris is actually in a really tough position here in terms of managing that group of people like a KB, the people who are like, I'm still willing. I'm still able. It would not be a bad thing for me to go to a game, but there's just been so much ridiculousness over time. Never mind the state of the stadium that I don't want to do it. And here's another thing that I want to mention while we're on this topic, because my dad of all people sent me an email about this referring to that Montana situation. But I thought to myself, I said, you know, I remember what RFK was like, but also I was a child, like genuinely was a person of a young, impressionable mind. And I remember what it was like at what was then known as Ral John, because we had season tickets and how that changed as an adult. I don't think that you can simply by sight exactness as in the literal place where the previous stadium was you're not trying to match the old thing that's just not what it's going to be like because that's just not possible and i'm very interested to see how this plays out in terms of what the holdover fan experience is from whatever they thought they were taking from rfk to northwest credit union 
funding bank situation, financial institution field. You got to get the word federal in there because the nickname <laughs> that we, we have chosen uh, around these parts is the Fed. Okay, sure. Love it. The Fed, the FEC, whatever you want to call it. Whatever <laughs> experience they're taking from one to another to what's going to be the next – to me, is almost far more interesting than what the football team does because that's a toss-up pretty much every year in terms of talent. Sure. I, I, that's, a, that's a great point, too, in terms of, like, there is an expectation of, like, oh, we'll be back in the spiritual home. Will that mean something to some people? Yes. And, like, in some ways, the experience in the parking lot will be far more similar to what you remember than in the stadium because Correct. they're going to build a world-class stadium because that's how this ownership group, you know, that's how they roll. Is It's not going to be, like, the, the beauty of RFK, but especially by the end, was like, it's a dump, but it's our dump. The stadium right. shakes. The stadium ain't going to shake. Like, the stadium is going to be built on solid ground. And it won't be a baseball um, and, field either, which is what RFK is, sidebar. It's a ballpark, in case we forgot right. that part of everything. Uh, was. It's, it, it's um, yeah. Well, well whatever. That. You yeah. know my point. Uh, that place was built know, for baseball I know your quite point. literally, you know? No, I, I, I 100% get your point. But, but... There is like I had this uh, comment the other day on on you know we had Sam Forty A on to talk about his reporting on this, mm -hmm. and someone was like, oh, "I can't wait for people to remember how long it takes to get there." And I'm like, "What are, compared to Landover? What are you talking about? You mean the one with the metro stop right there?" And there's there's just like a reality to there is this like the spiritual side of the RFK thing, but there's also logistics side, and that's always been my point is like from a logistical standpoint, yeah, they're gonna have to do some construction. They're going to have to widen some roads. They're going to have to probably redo some of the Metro stuff out there. They're going to have to really be on their P's and Q's from like a, the, you know, the, the urban planner standpoint in a way that uh, Washington DC always isn't. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's certainly better logistically than, Hey, this is in the middle of a neighborhood in Landover. Cause as someone who sat in an hour of traffic, um, you know, to get into the stadium this weekend, like that sucked. Like I was literally driving past an apartment complex. Like this road ain't built for 80,000 people to get in and out. What are we doing? RFK, I think can be, I don't know if it's retrofitted or refitted to do that in a way. Plus the public transit is a complete game changer. It's the only way to make any stadium anywhere in the world accessible to mass amounts of people without it being a God awful experience. And it's just a requirement. Well, you know, we're, we're, since we're into the urban planning discussion, I don't necessarily know that I agree that the situation automatically gets better. Everything you retrofit between dealing with the district on Sundays for what, 10, 12 max times a year. I don't know that that's worth it for the so-called spiritual home. I, and I, I don't, I don't, and it's also a situation where, I feel like you also don't want to get that wrong. Like if it turns out that you get to RFK and people are like, this actually sucks. You know what I mean? Like that's entirely in play. If it just becomes too difficult to build something there that actually is in cohesion with the rest of the neighborhood, because that's in a neighborhood too. People forget that part about RFK because they were, you know, they're blinded by the glory years of the past. And so it's a really difficult thing, but the logistics are one thing. The sort of vibe is another. And as you know, I've got plenty of friends who still go to games who are season ticket holders as well. And they're going for the people that are there. You know what I'm saying? They're not necessarily that pressed about the football. So I was happy to see them get a win in the simple context of the fans were rewarded. But, you know, I still think that this challenge is so much more difficult than just go back to RFK. Everything will be fine as far as fan experience is concerned. It's much harder than that. Um, Clint Yates, ESPN with us here on the Hoffman Show. So, if you're, I don't know what your schedule. Uh, you haven't sent the email yet for next week because you no. don't send your your uh, okay. friends and All family. Right. Here's what I'm on TV. The email. curtain, okay. Uh, the emails little, have hey, been I, a little off recently. It's okay? a great, it's a great idea. It's something that I should do, uh, <laughs> but I just hope that everybody. The amount of times I have like ants and whoever they're like, what times your show again? I'm like the one I've been doing at the same time for how many years now? Uh, the point is, Clinton. Yes. Tuesday, if you're on around the horn, and Jaden Daniels plays well and the commanders upset the Bengals. What's the conversation? And then perhaps uh, if we had to pick likeliness, this might be a little bit more likely if we're being honest. If he struggles on Monday night, what's the conversation like on Around the Horn Tuesday? So there's two things happening here. Number one is the opponent. Um, the Bengals are a team of favor, I would say, when it comes to what the national lens is. People want the Bengals to be good. People like Joe Burrow. People think Jamar Chase is an exciting player because he is. I don't think the commanders are anywhere close to that. So an upset, I think, will be looked at as what's going on with the Bengals. Do they have a real problem? To be fair. Now, that said, the second part about this is that 
That's the advantage of being off the national radar is that you don't have the Stephen A's and Shannon Sharps yelling about you every week to the point that they could potentially change your own personal narrative inside of your building. That is, in fact, an advantage, in my opinion, for the commanders. Let the kid develop. I said this on television yesterday. I've been saying this for daggone near a decade. Quarterback, worst coach position in the league. Do not pull a Carolina Panthers, y'all, and have some goofy out of the locker room conversation all the time just because you happen to lose a couple games. The Bob situation was unique. There was a power structure, excuse me, there was a power balance failure between head coach, GM, and owner that was usurped over all of the football and it screwed everything up. Thank goodness that they're not in that situation now. And I hope that expectations can be managed. Sure. Does a win against the Bengals on Monday Night Football solidify you a little bit in terms of the fact that you probably belong in the NFL? Absolutely. But don't get too fired up about this. This is a long process. So because the Bengals are so much far ahead of the commanders in terms of what their believed paths to success are, I think win or lose, the story is the Bengals and Joe Burrow. That is probably correct. That uh, Now, uh, thinking about the graphics on the, the bottom of Around the Horn <laughs> as I watch on mute because we're on at 5 o'clock, uh, and, and it's definitely going to be Bengals first. Then, then reality will be like, by the way, the commanders, and then yeah. you, you get to your Jaden Daniels much. topic because it's a rookie quarterback, and when it comes to rookie quarterbacks, we can't help ourselves. Exactly. Uh, Clint right. Yates, you can watch him on Around the Horn. You can listen to him on ESPN Daily, uh, and, and that comes out Daily. Daily. It turns out. Uh, yeah. Clint Yates, everybody. Uh, he'll be back on Wednesday here on the Hoffman Show. Thank you, Gregory. You're doing a lot of shows today. Run along. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clint Yates from ESPN. Yeah. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 9-8. Tell your mama I said what's up.